Need a little more screaming in your life after discussing politics over Thanksgiving dinner? No show reaches higher disciples than Lioness. When a character isn't yelling at the top of their lungs, they're running home invasion drills set to heavy metal music. This season, the plot is as messy as mashed potatoes and gravy. The kidnapping of a congresswoman over the U.S.-Mexico border in the premiere quickly transformed into a plot about China's plan to invade Taiwan. Joe's lioness team assembled with a new operative named Carrillo, but nothing has gone according to plan. Team Lioness is returning to base in Iraq following the events of Episode 7, where they must surreptitiously intercept enemy intelligence on the border. Meanwhile, Caitlin is now in charge of the overall scheme of Lost Tigers, the Mexican drug gang Joe has been pursuing all along. Since their niece, Josefina, is a U.S. soldier, they have the upper hand, but now it's up to her father Pablo to play ball. In the binge-worthy TV series, Joe nearly died, but she is determined to return to combat. However, is she going to survive, and can anybody else? Lioness Season 2 Episode 8 begins with the confluence of the Turkey, Iraq, and Iron borders. Cody, dressed entirely in camouflage, yep, Taylor Sheridan is back, is pursuing a landing chopper. Joe is already in her physical limit before they even start while Joe Bobby, Josefina, and Cruz are following up in tanks. They return to the U.S. base where in episode 2 Joe and Josefina first met. Joe insists on bringing a gun with her when the crews try and get ready. Keep in mind that she was informed in episode 7 that she was just permitted to watch and offer advice. In the meantime, Josefina's former commander believes she is insane for piloting an unfamiliar aircraft with just one door gunner and no flight plan. Cruz will accompany her, and the two agree to talk if they survive the new mission. They brief the team. In essence, they have roughly two hours to reach an outpost in order to stop the invasion. Although there is some support, it is either lacking or has been harmed in Afghanistan. Nearly all of the enemy's equipment and training match that of the Lyamuses. Joe has already been informed that damage must occur in Iran even though the border with Iraq is only two kilometers away. Skyhawk is the official name of the operation. In an attempt to speak with Pablo, Caitlin, and Brian arrive at the location where Kyle is hiding. All of his bank accounts worldwide, including his kid trusts, have been blocked. According to Caitlin, they are coming to get rid of the threat to U.S. national security, which is actually his brother. What they seek is Pablo's confidence to assist them, which they would then tirelessly protect. The two seduce Pablo, and he falters by offering him the freedom he has in the United States with the security he has in Mexico. Caitlin and Brian want to meet Pablo the next morning, so Pablo is forced to phone Alvaro. They guarantee him $300 million in advance with additional funds to be provided. Edwin, in the meantime, summons the chief of staff to brief him on a developing situation. In essence, Edwin's nuclear capabilities are being activated by two Chinese nuclear scientists who are traveling to Isfahan nuclear base with supplies or knowledge. This is unknown to the president. It's all clear when four vehicles depart the hostile outpost. Josefina and Cruz launch an aerial assault on the enemy convoy as Sheridan's character traverses the broad plains in what is essentially an army dune buggy. Their helicopter has been struck and is crashing. They prepare to collide with the Earth, with Cody in a nearby sniper base attempting to eliminate whoever was left standing in the convoy. Bobby and the on-ground crew are ordered to advance. We cut to Caitlin and company being taken to meet Alvaro at an airfield. Before they reach his property, everyone is forced to exit the vehicle which results in a gunfight. When Pablo calms things down, the automobiles start to move in. After Brian slips a gun into Pablo's pocket, Pablo instantly shoots Alvaro in the face, eliminating the rest of his goons in the process. Pablo informs the other men that the Chinese hostage is CIA property and that the cartel has a new leader. Crows emerges from the crash in Iran. Although she is unable to walk, Josefina is also alive. Joe and his team are called back to base, leaving them totally vulnerable to approaching enemy vehicles. She tells Bobby that they must arrive first and disregard the directives. A shootout breaks out before they can reach the crash site, since they are vastly outnumbered. Cody's abilities are limited and the others are being destroyed. Once the opposing vehicles are disabled, Cody suggests that they retreat, leaving the snipers to cover. Meanwhile, a fresh tank strikes them. They make it out alive, but the ground-based opponents know where they are. While Joe looks for the aircraft, they walk. The entire outpost moves in to launch a foot assault while the team reorganizes. Edelman watches as Cody tells Joe they must relocate, and he is told to phone the president. There is still five minutes to back up, and more enemy forces are arriving. As opponents flood in, the crew begins to be shot one by one. Josefina is left screaming in agony as Joe runs out of ammunition. The presidential backup shows up just when things seem hopeless, eliminating every enemy unit in their immediate vicinity. When relevant embassies call the CIA, Edwin suggests that they let them stew. 
The lionesses have sustained some severe, potentially fatal injuries, yet no one has perished. Joe is left in a very emotional state as a result of the massive cleanup effort. She later returns home after crying uncontrollably. After their earlier argument, the two reconcile with Neil waiting for her at the door.